This video goes over the requirements for the Week 7 Interactive and Collaborative Learning Contemplation Assignment. Go into your Pilot Learning Management System in IDL 7130 in Week 7 to get the detailed information about the requirements for this assignment. So the big idea we are examining in IDL 7130 is can online classes be interactive and collaborative learning environments that encourage deep learning? In IDL 7130, you completed several assignments where you attempted to create learning environments that were interactive and collaborative in an effort to enhance students' deeper learning. Two of those assignments were asynchronous, the first web conference and the voice thread lesson. And two of your assignments were synchronous ass assignments, the second and third web conference. All of the assignments were designed using the practical inquiry model. This model defines outcomes of collaboration in a course through the four phases of an educational experience, which include triggering phase, exploration phase, integration phase, and the resolution phase. This assignment asks you to contemplate if you feel online classes, asynchronous and synchronous, can be interactive and collaborative learning environments that encourage deep learning. Here are the requirements for this assignment. The elements for this assignment will be uploaded to your Google Sites electronic portfolio. You will add information, contemplations, and your previously created web conference and voice thread lesson to your Google Sites electronic portfolio. Create a new web page in your Google Sites electronic portfolio, and here's what's required. You need to have a banner labeled uh, with the class IDL 7130, Making Online Classes Interactive. You need to have a page title that includes the assignment um, title, Interactive and Collaborative Learning Contemplation. Uh, some of the required components include it needs to be accessible, chunked up content, clearly identified sec sections, section headers, high quality aesthetics and visual consistency. Uh, you need to have sections. Uh, and those sections include the benefit and challenges, community of inquiry, practical inquiry model, example one and example two. And to receive credit, it needs to be uploaded and turned into the, your pilot Dropbox with a self-reflection and your electronic portfolio URL. Um, so for your benefits and challenges sections, Include a section header labeled Benefits and Challenges. Include subheader labeled Benefits and another one for Challenges. And within each of these different subheader sections, go ahead and include the benefits and challenges in developing classes that are interactive and collaborative to encourage deep learning. The next section is about the Community of Inquiry Framework. So include a section header labeled Community of Inquiry Framework, include an overview of the Community of Inquiry Framework, and also subheaders for each of the COI subcomponents, which include social presence, cognitive presence, and teaching presence. Include an overview of each of these three subcomponents and why they're critical in designing classes with high levels of community of inquiry. You also need to do an overview of the practical inquiry model. Include a section header labeled practical inquiry model. Include an overview of the practical inquiry model and include subheaders and an overview about how we customized and utilized the four phases um, for the design of the lessons in this class for the triggering phase the exploration phase, the integration phase, and the resolution phase. You should include two examples of your homework where you created lessons that include opportunities for students to have interaction and collaboration for deeper learning in online classes. You will be including a synchronous 
and an asynchronous example. So the first example will be the synchronous. Include a section header labeled example one, synchronous. Your first example will be, will be your third web conference that included interactions, a case study, breakout rooms, and include the following information, opportunities. Tell how students had opportunities for interaction, collaboration, and encourage deeper learning. Frameworks. Include an overview of any frameworks you use to help develop your session, such as using the practical inquiry model, beyond bullet point design, retrieval practice. And then you will insert your web conference three. You will use Camtasia to make a screenshot video of the web conference. You will add chapter markers. You will post it in YouTube, and then you will embed it into your Google Sites electronic portfolio. Your second example will be your asynchronous example. So include a section header labeled example two asynchronous. Your second example should be your voice thread lesson. Include the following information. Talk about students' opportunities. Tell how students had opportunities for interaction, collaboration, and encourage deeper learning. And talk about the frameworks. Include an overview of any frameworks used to develop your session, such as the practical inquiry model, beyond bullet point design, retrieval practice, and then you will insert your voice thread. And to insert your voice thread, you copy the embed code to insert voice thread into your Google Sites electronic portfolio. And then to receive credit, you will turn uh, it into your pilot learning management system. It'll be due Saturday by midnight to let your instructor know that your assignment is complete by posting your self-reflection uh, into your Google, uh, with your Google Sites electronic portfolio URL and your pilot learning management system. So to post your self-reflection, step number one, click on the assignment and then Dropbox. Step number two, select the proper Dropbox. Step number three, type in your self-reflection, and that self-reflection should include your Google Sites electronic portfolio URL, and then you click on Submit. So that's a little bit about the assign assignment requirements for this specific assignment. Here's the instructions on how to make a video of your web conference, add chapter markers, and upload it to YouTube. These step-by-step -step instructions become obsolete the day I post them because software is continually updated. Take these step-by-step -step instructions as a place to get started and then figure things out if the instructions aren't perfect. It's recommended that you use Camtasia or a comparable product to do a screenshot video of your Web Conference 3 to use as one of your examples. So first you need to launch your Web Conference recording. So go to the Wright State WebEx portal at wright.webex.com, click sign in, enter your Wright State email address, click sign in, click on recordings on the left-hand menu side, click on the hyperlink to your session to launch, and then click on the turn off captions icon at the bottom of your web, web conference to turn off the closed caption. So you need to set up your uh, Camtasia. So go ahead and launch Camtasia. If you're prompted to update your Camtasia, go ahead and select yes, proceed through the update process. You probably need to close Camtasia down once the upgrade file is downloaded. Click new project, click file save as, navigate to where you wanna save it, click a new folder um, to save all the Camtasia files, give the folder um, a meaningful name, and then um, give the Camtasia file a meaningful name like Web Conference 3 Stover and then save the project. When you launch Camtasia, click on record to get a dialog box to make your recording choices. Be sure to customize the screen recording properties so that the recording does not include parts of the screen that are not needed and detract from the message. Only select the screen area. Uh, click on the down arrow and select custom region, choose region, 
This changes your mouse into a crosshair that you use to select a custom region that you want to record. This will delete all other unneeded screen real estate outside of this area. You also need to set up the Camtasia system audio. The web conference was previously recorded and already includes audio. Therefore, you won't need live webcam or live computer microphone. However, you need to activate the system audio to record the audio that was previously recorded from your web conference. So here's what you do. So step number one, you click on the button this in the second box to turn off integrated webcam because you don't want the webcam recorded. Step number two, you click on the button in the third box to turn off the computer microphone as you're not gonna be recording any audio narration. Step number three, you click on the button in the fourth box to turn on the system audio since you're going to record the previously recorded audio from your web conference. And then step number four, go ahead and click the REC, the record, to stop the to start the recording. As far as the Camtasia requirements after that, refer to pilot and include those identified requirements such as includes in simple editing, have opening and ending titles, have fade in and fade out music, include chapter markers, and then publish to YouTube. These are some of the requirements for uh, to get your project, um, uh, the web conference digitized to incorporate. All right, now I'm gonna try to do a live demonstration about how to create your electronic portfolio. Having um, a completed electronic portfolio is a requirement to graduate uh, from the MED Instructional Design and Learning Technologies Idle program. So uh, you'll be adding artifacts of completed assignments from each class as you progress through the program. Um, most of you have already created a Google Sites electronic portfolio from a previous class. So a lot of these instructions in the first part of this are for any new students that have enrolled in IDLE that need to set up their Google Sites portfolio or it can also serve as a reminder. So if you don't have a Google account, first you need to create a Google account. Um, go ahead and do that. And then you're gonna go ahead and go into Google, google.com, click on the waffle over here and go and select uh, Google Drive. This will get you started. And then what you want to do is go ahead and click on new, select a new folder, give it a meaningful name. So this might be idle electronic portfolio. And we will go ahead and create it. And within that folder, um, go ahead and open it up. You can click on new. And we will come down here and go under more and come down here for Google Sites and create a Google Sites. Um, and this will be your, you know, Stover, your last name. Excuse me. We will go back over here and give it a name. So um, I have already created one. So we will pop over here. And um, this is where it's gotten started. Um, I have one here, so when I come over here and I click on Drive and um, Electronic Portfolio, uh, this is where I've got mine up and going. So, so you need to create yours if you have not. So uh, once you have it created, you need to um, create a new, um, you know, um, site within uh, within your electronic portfolio, you need to create a new web page for each and every class uh, that you go through uh, within the program. So if you go over here on the right hand side and you click on pages uh, and you come down here with the plus under the new page, you're going to create one for every class that you go through. So IDL 7110, 20, 30, 40, 50, um, IDL 7200, 7210. So, you'll, so over here now you see there's a new page uh, for, uh, or 
a mini web page within your portfolio for each one. So the class that we're in now, IDL 7130, we've created it. Uh, you can go ahead and um, we can get that started and go ahead and launch it now. Um, so at the top of the page, um, by default, it will give uh, the web page banner the name that you named it. So if you named it IDL 7130, it's only going to say IDL 7130 at the top here. But these are customizable and you can change them. So in this case, you can double click in here and you can see that not only did I have uh, the name of the class, but I added making online courses interactive, which you, you definitely want to do. Um, so also the banner at the top is customizable. You can make it smaller, bigger, and I want that to fit all in one page, on, on, on one line so that it doesn't take up so, so much space. So I'm going to go ahead and change it from 36 point to, I will come over there and make that, see I can make that fit on one page. I have to probably, well, make that even smaller. Twenty-four point, and it fits all on one page. Um, so the image behind it is customizable, but you need to be careful um, uh, that you create a look and feel that has high contrast, that's viewable for students with disabilities. And once you create um, a look for a page within a class, you need to be consistent for all pages within that class. So. Uh, in IDL 7110, there might be five or six or seven different pages. Each page just needs to have a consistent look and feel, so you copy the page. So you could uh, come on over here for that, and you can actually click the little down arrow and duplicate the page. Now, in this class, there's only going to be one web page, so you can stick with it. Now, you can have different looks and feels for different classes and get as creative as you want there, but for each individual class, make sure that it's the same all the way through. So once we come over here, if you wanna change the look of your banner, um, you can come over here, click on the banner itself, and come over here and click on Change Image. You can upload images or select images, and it has pre-selected images that you can add. So I will go ahead and select this, and uh, now the challenge here is that you have a, a background image that has light and dark. And so that's going to make it difficult to pick a text choice color because you're not going to have a high contrast over there. So be very careful about the image. So I'm going to go ahead and select an image and go through and find the image that I had used before because this one you can see it's all going to be on the dark down there and select. And what's nice about that one, while there's some images at the top, the text itself, and we can move this text, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we will try to move it. Um, it's actually all in the dark, so that gives high contrast. Okay, so we are started here. And um, so we've got the banner at the top. Now we're going to change the, I'm just peeking at my notes here, um, up at the top here, you should have a, a web page title that indicates the purpose of, uh, uh, of that one page. And so in that case, um, I'll come down here at the bottom to show you what a blank uh, website looks like, part of the page. You double click on it and then you get the wheel of the different options. The capital T and the small t is when you are going to um, add text. So you click on the text and you type in here. So this might be the, um, um, web page title here and um, it's normal text here for cascading style sheet for individuals uh, that are going to be using a speaking browser you want to identify the text hierarchically so the speaking browser knows what to read first the, the headlines to read first so that it doesn't look at all text as being the same. So in this case, I can click the little down arrow and say that's going to be a title because it knows to read the titles first. You can also come over here and change uh, the section color uh, to a different section color. So I'm going to go ahead and click the darker color. Uh, I can come over here and click this and I can um, uh, change the text style, the text size, and I can also um, 
align it and center it. And so uh, that's where we get, the, and I can move this around. So when I come back up here, you see that I had done the banner, I did the uh, web page um, title, and then you're gonna come down to the required information on each page. So um, for your final assignment for week seven, uh, you need to have um, some different section um, sections and subsections. And again, those need to be identified with different type styles, type fonts. So uh, you can go ahead and uh, type it in, and then you can come over here and change the background color. In this case, I'm going to pick a different uh, color. And you select it, and instead of being normal text, and again, that might be um, um, just a heading font, or if you have a subheading, you can identify it and make that a, a subheading font right there, over there. And that's how you add um, some of this text and the different backgrounds and the headings and subheadings. So when we come back down over here, uh, you need to insert uh, your voice thread. So when I come over here to your voice thread, to find it, uh, there's your voice thread. Um, you are going to click on share. And then first thing you wanna do is um, once your fake students have, um, have completed the module for VoiceThread, you want to go in there and change it so that it's locked down again and nobody has access rights to it. So under who has access, um, under um, anyone can comment, I would just change um, anyone can view um, so that way people can see it but they can't comment on it. Uh, but at first it needs to be set to um, anyone can comment because your fake students, your colleagues need to go in and complete it and I need to go in and see it. And then once that's done, go in and change anyone can view. So uh, for, for now, we'll go ahead and leave it. Anyone can comment. Um, and then you come back over here to the basic tab, click on embed. Uh, we will go ahead, make sure that it's um, set to anyone can view and comment. And I'm gonna change it from, um, um, 480 seems a little small. I'm gonna go to 600. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on the embed code, then come back over here uh, to my website, which I think is right here. And um, in this case, I'll go, go down to the bottom so you can see what it looks like from a, 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 from a web page. I'm going to double click on the web page, um, click the embed code, and then select the web embed code and um, go ahead and paste in there. It gives you a preview. We can go ahead and insert. It's not gonna be big enough, so we need to enlarge it and just make it just big enough so that it all shows and then you want to center it all so then we've inserted we've embedded the voice thread now before the voice thread you need to have a section header identifying the voice thread assignment lesson and then a text overview uh, that tells your audience what they're about to see so if you come back over here uh, and type that in so it might be something like you know, voice thread, or I think it was example one or two, I, I forget what it is. And this would be the asynchronous. Uh, and so uh, you need to change it from normal text to a heading, and then I would change the background. So that differentiate it. So we can move these with the little dots over here. I can move this above. And then you want to add the text. So I can double click over here and type in here. And this is where you're going to provide the audience, you know, uh, the information about the assignment. So what kind of um, what kind of frameworks did you use? What kind of technology did you use? Um, how did this assignment allow students to be able to be um, interactive and collaborative? And how did it allow them to deepen their learning? So you provide all that information uh, to students, uh, to your audience. And I will come back over here. Okay, so uh, when we see it, it's going to have the
the web page, uh, the, the name of the assignment up there, the example two, you're going to have a banner, uh, text information, and then the embedded, um, the embedded assignment. So that's how you did the first one. So we can copy this again. Um, I can click on duplicate and I'm going to, maybe this is assignment number one, the synchronous. Come back over here and I can move this right above it. So um, I'm going to copy the text and move it down here. And then if we want to um, embed the uploaded uh, uh, Web Conference 3 that was digitized, so uh, you come into YouTube. Um, we're going to click on share and come over here to embed and we will copy that and i'm going to come back to my website double click here and click on embed and do the embed code and we will go ahead and click on next and it gives us a preview and we can insert again you're going to need to size it so that the whole video shows but just big enough so that it shows and then you want to move and center that. And so there we have uh, the example and then the text, and then that would be the YouTube video. So I'm looking at my notes to see if I'm missing anything here. Okay, so we, we've, we've added the information to it. And then to publish it, you go ahead and click on publish. It gives you a preview. You're going to publish it again. Down here at the bottom, it actually quickly allows you to click on view if you want the URL to the published site, but quite honestly, that disappears so quickly. I find it's much easier to go up to this little icon up here, copy, publish, uh, site link, uh, go ahead and click on copy link, and you always want to do a quality check. And that's going to be the URL. Take a look at it. Is it right? Do you need to make changes? And this is the URL that you are going to use to send to the instructor uh, to let uh, your him or her know uh, when you when you go into Pilot and the Dropbox and you post your self reflection. And you're also going to give that URL. Um, uh, you know, that's the one you're going to use to publish when you go ahead and let your instructor know that you're done with the assignment. Um, so that's a little bit about how to uh, publish your electronic portfolio uh, for your uh, completed assignments.